Ladies and gentlemen, welcome. I'm Josh Strife Hayes, and this is an end game guide to the MMORPG Terror. This super simple guide is designed for the players approaching end game. You're about to unlock a huge amount of content, so I'm going to explain everything you'll need to know once you reach the final few levels where to go, what to do, and some hints and tips that will make your journey easier. A few notes before we begin. I'm playing on the PC version, which is several months ahead of the console game. If you're a console player, you should still watch, but be aware you may see mechanics or items not yet available on the console version. I'm also playing on the European Gameforge servers. If you're a North American player, you may notice some numbers aren't exactly the same. Shops may have different prices, but the vast majority of this guide will apply for all players on all versions. I won't be focusing on a specific class. Instead, I'll be giving you a general overview of what to expect at the end game, locations that will become important, and how to gear up. For specific class information, I've linked the class Discord servers in the description of this video. Check these out for in-depth information about your class, and thank you to the Terra community for making and upkeeping these. One final note. To make this guide both as simple and as relatable as possible, I'm going on the journey with you. This is my fresh level 60 brawler. No VIP, no Terra Club membership, no advantages. I'll be showing you everything I do, where I go, and explaining why I do it to prepare you for the grueling endgame. We have a lot to cover, so let's go. Part 1 60 to 65. While the end game may truly begin at 65, your journey to it actually begins five levels earlier, at 60. As you've been leveling from 20 to 60, you've likely been using dungeons for fast, efficient experience. However, from 60 to 65, that's going to change. If you open your Vanguard request menu and filter to dungeons only, you'll notice it's actually empty. Instead, Click the magnifying glass at the top of the screen and choose Instance Matching. You'll notice level 60 dungeons, likely greyed out, and a level 58 dungeon. Don't worry about these level 60 dungeons. Despite being higher level, they give pathetic experience. You'll want to queue up for the level 58, Kelsyke's Nest. This dungeon is extremely short and easy and gives a decent amount of experience. Once you've completed it, there will be a short two-minute cooldown timer before you can queue up again. Keep queuing up for this as often as possible. It's the fastest way to 65. While doing this, we will now be returning to quests. The level 60 quest line will unlock as soon as you hit 60. You can forget all previous quest lines and focus on this one. For my brawler, the quest is called Supplies and Demands and is the start of the Vanguard Initiative questline. Use the various transport options available to you, teleports, Pegasus flight paths, or your main recall spell, to travel there and begin following this questline. The questline, the Vanguard Initiative, is essential, as it will be slow, but provide you constant experience and give you all the leveling items you need and eventually lead to your Apex class. To recap, 60 to 65 will be instance matching for Kelsyke's Nest as often as possible and following all level 60 plus quest lines, focusing on the Vanguard initiative and all following quests it leads directly to. Once you hit level 64, you won't be able to queue for Kelsyke's Nest anymore. It'll be entirely quest experience. I'll go do this now. 60 to 65. The sped up footage in the background is to prove to you that I'm following the same journey as you, queuing up for Kelsyke's Nest as often as possible and then following all the quest lines as soon as I hit 64. Following the Vanguard Initiative story quests will eventually take you to the outskirts of Velika, then on board a lavish skyship, eventually crashing into the jungle. The quests are simple and quick, but will also give rewards that are likely way better than your current equipment. Equip them for now, 
but don't worry about optimizing them too much. We will be replacing them permanently very soon. A quick tip. If you've finished a dungeon and have been placed back into the world unsure of where you are or how to get back to where you were, you can always use the Vanguard request menu to teleport directly to a quest objective or your main recall spell, which every race will have in their skills list, sending you back to a main city where you can find a Pegasus Flightmaster. At level 64, Kelsike's Nest again becomes unavailable. You'll have to rely on quest lines to gain all the experience. Keep pushing through, and after a few short hours, you'll hit 65. These levels will be much slower than you're used to. Terra will get much grindier from now on, and enemies will be noticeably tougher. If you're following the story quests, eventually your journey will take you to High Watch, which is where we need to be. After a few hours, with enough story quests, you'll reach 65, and the real end game begins. If your journey for some reason hasn't taken you to High Watch by the time you're 65, there's a quick cheat to get there. Press H to open your Vanguard menu, then click Redeem under the Vanguard credits in the bottom left. Select Yes, and it will teleport you straight there. However, the game is perfectly paced to have you arrive at High Watch extremely close to level 65. Part 2. Level 65. The moment you hit level 65, the game is about to change. You're going to be given the weapons, armor, and accessories you'll use for the rest of the game. You'll have new quests instantly added to your quest log, and if you open the instance matching menu, you'll see a huge amount of dungeons with complex rewards. Let's break all this down and take it one step at a time. If you've been following the level 60 story quests, you will have been to High Watch, the large hub city where you've probably seen loads of other players running around. This is one of the busiest end game locations and a great place to chat and trade. You can teleport to High Watch for free, remember, by pressing H to open the Vanguard request menu, then clicking Redeem down here on the bottom left. This shortcut can save you some travel time later. There are three major things we need to do once we hit level 65. 1. Get our free flying mount. 2. Get the weapons and armor we'll need for the rest of the game. 3. Get all the accessories and crystals we'll need for them. Thankfully, the game gives you all of these. I'll go through the quests with my brawler on screen and explain exactly how to get them all. Before we do any of these steps, it's now safe to sell every item you've been wearing and weapon you've been using. You won't need anything you already have. All the old weapons and armor can be discarded or sold. Step 1. Free Flying Mount Once your inventory is empty of all old items and equipment, and you have discarded or sold everything you were wearing, talk to this guy. Marmundum, standing in High Watch by the bank. He'll give you several items. One of them is a slip of paper that grants you the Tulpa flying mount for free. Right click the slip, then go to your skills menu, the ride tab, and click and drag the Tulpa to your hotbar. You now have a permanent flying mount. Once that's done, talk to him again for your weapons and armor. Step 2. Weapons and armor. Marmundum will now give you a box with your guardian weapon inside it and some additional class specific glyphs. Ignore the glyphs for now and focus on the weapon. Open the box and you'll be given the items. Then just as you have been doing with all other enigmatic items, that's the one with the question mark, right click on your new weapon to see what item effects you'd like it to have. Important notes applying to weapons, armor, and accessories now you're at the end game. Setting the correct effects is vital if you want to optimize for a perfect end game build. Research which stats your class needs before committing to these. The best resource you have access to will be the Terra class discord servers, each discord focusing on a different class. 
Those servers are linked in the description below. Once you've set your weapon to the desired stats, equip it. The same NPC will then provide you with your Guardian armor. Each piece must have the effect set before being equipped, just as with the weapon. Consult your class guide before committing to a specific build. When you have your Guardian weapon and Guardian armor equipped, you can rest easy, knowing you've got the weapons and armor you will need for the rest of the game. Step 3. Accessories and Crystals After you've equipped your new weapon and armor, keep following the High Watch story quests and you'll be sent to the NPC Redorn, who will give you your endgame accessories. Redorn is walking up and down the hill outside of High Watch, but is easy enough to find. Talk to him several times to complete your accessory set. He'll provide you with a belt, four rings, four earrings, and two amulets, making up two different sets of accessories. You can keep both sets and swap between them freely, and as with all enigmatic items, you must set the effects you want the items to have before you can equip them. With armor, weapons, and accessories now sorted, your questline will take you to Braga inside High Watch, who will give you a voucher to exchange for innerwear, one of three choices. Choose the one your class needs, a brooch, and some crystals to equip into your weapons and armor. You now have everything you need. You're set to begin the end game, but we can add a few final touches before we begin. Optional extras. One, better crystals. You're almost done, but if you'd like a larger selection of crystals, talk to Kartan in High Watch. He sells crystals for Federation credits. You should pick up some green crystals there for your accessories and add them into your accessory crystal slots, whatever would work for your class. They're not too expensive, and he's already in High Watch. It's super easy to grab exactly what you need. 2. High Watch Teleport Scrolls The merchant standing next to the bridge will sell you High Watch Teleport Scrolls for only one gold. Pick up a few just in case you ever need to come back here quickly. Everything you need to prepare for the end game is within or extremely close to High Watch. The city can be confusing and densely packed, but follow each quest line here and you'll quickly gather your full set of end game items. Now you've got your set of Guardian armor and weapons and the basic set of Prospect accessories. Let's talk about enchanting and upgrading them. Enchanting and upgrading. I mentioned earlier how the items you're now wearing will be the last ones you ever need, and that's correct, but it doesn't mean these items will never change. You'll be upgrading them. The process of enchanting and then upgrading your weapon, armor, and accessories will be the majority of your endgame. Here's a step-by-step -step rundown of the process. Upgrading the weapon works exactly the same as upgrading the avatar weapons you've been using all game, except the reagents you need to upgrade them are different. You won't be using Feedstock or Alkahest anymore. Unequip your Guardian weapon, open the enchanting interface by opening your inventory and clicking on the forging icon, bottom left, then right-click your weapon to add it into the enchanting window. You'll be able to see what reagents you need to enchant it to a Guardian weapon plus one. I'll explain how to get these reagents in a few minutes, but for now, I'd like to explain how enchanting and upgrading works at the end game. Enchanting a weapon or piece of armor will increase the number after the name, plus one, plus two, and so on. The end game items you start with are all guardian. All guardian pieces can be enchanted to plus six. Once the maximum level of plus six is reached, they can't be enchanted anymore, but they can be upgraded. Upgrading the item changes the item's name and can only be done once maximum enchantment level has been reached. Upgrading a plus six guardian weapon or armor piece will take more reagents and on a successful attempt will advance it to a 
twist shard item. The enchanting process will then begin again, but this time twist shard can be raised to plus 9. This is the process you'll follow for all your weapons and armour, enchanting to maximum and upgrading using the reagents found through dungeons. The current item tiers are Guardian is the basic endgame armour you'll be given at level 65 and can be raised to plus 6. Guardian plus 6 can be upgraded to Twist Shard. Twist Shard plus 9 goes to Frost Metal. Frost Metal plus 9 can be upgraded to Storm Cry. Storm Cry plus 9 then goes to Heroic Oath. And Heroic Oath is currently the highest tier available and can only be enchanted to plus 3. Accessories follow a slightly different path. They cannot be enchanted, only upgraded. The accessory naming tiers are Prospect, you'll be given this for free at level 65, Bellum, Daylight, Entropy, and Ethereal. If you're successful with an attempt to enchant on a particularly high-level piece of equipment, a server-wide message will flash up on other players' screens. If you've been wondering why you've been seeing player name enchanted armor piece to plus whatever pop up, this is why. It's unlikely and rare and worthy of celebration. This is probably a good time to talk about item experience. Guardian items, the level 65 basic you get given, have a 100% enchant and upgrade success chance. You won't ever fail, and thus they cannot gain item experience. But every tier above has a chance to fail. If you fail to enchant an item, you'll lose the reagents, meaning you have to spend time and money to go and get them again. At higher levels, failure is extremely likely, and enchanting to Heroic Oath plus 3 can take many, many attempts. You can, however, increase the chance of success. Every weapon and armour tier above Guardian can gain item experience as you play. The higher an item's experience level, the more likely the enchanting attempt will succeed. Item experience does not represent the exact chance of success. It simply shows how much of an advantage you've added. For example, an item with 0% experience may have a 50% chance of enchanting success. The same item, after several hours of play, gaining 100% experience, may now have an 80% enchanting chance of success. It's a huge advantage, but it's not always a guarantee. Those numbers I just gave were examples to illustrate the point and not in-game exact numbers. At higher tiers, Frost Metal and up, even an item with 100% item experience will not have a 100% enchant or upgrade chance. If an enchant attempt fails, a fail stack will be added, just like with the avatar weapons. A fail stack is a small, permanent percent chance increase for the next attempt. This means that while failure is annoying, it will always add a fail stack boost and they will stack until you succeed. It's constantly getting more likely to succeed after each failed attempt. If at any point or for any reason you somehow lose or destroy your guardian items, you can purchase them again from a Vanguard Quartermaster in any major city. The process of enchanting items will be known to you because of avatar weapons while leveling, but the reagents you now need will be new. Hover your mouse over them while your guardian item is in the enchanting window to see what they are. Then open the Instance Matching menu. You'll see a huge number of new dungeons, but if you scroll down to the lower ones, you'll be able to see those dungeons provide the reagents you need. Your job will now be to level these weapons, armor pieces, and accessories up to maximum.
by grinding dungeons for the required reagents. But don't worry, the game actually gives you a great head start. Let's talk about the new dungeons first, and then how to get a head start with enchanting. Dungeons. The new dungeon list is huge, with some important changes from the list you're used to. First of all, most high-level dungeons will be unavailable, simply because your item level is far too low. To increase your item level, you'll need to complete lower dungeons, use the reagent rewards you gain to enchant your weapons and armor and accessories, and then slowly fight your way through harder dungeons. Each dungeon will have a star difficulty rating, a required item level needed for entry, an adventure coin cost, and a list of potential rewards. The star rating is pretty simple. The more stars a dungeon has, the harder it is. The item level is related to you, and will be reached with time. You can see your current item level to the right-hand side of your hotbar at the bottom of your screen. A small three-digit number next to a sword and shield icon. What now will begin to matter are adventure coins, and they work like this. You cannot simply farm a dungeon all day in terror, as each entry will cost you adventure coins, and when you're out of adventure coins, you can't go into the dungeon. Adventure coins are a free currency that slowly but constantly refill. If you're out of adventure coins for the day because you've been doing too many dungeons, simply wait. Being a VIP or Terror Club member will increase the total amount of adventure coins you can hold from 1,000 to just over 1,600 and will also increase the rate at which they refill. While dungeons will be a very important part of your endgame experience, allowing you to hunt for the reagents to improve your items, you should also now focus on quests. Quest lines. All quests pre-level 65, while fun, aren't nearly as important as your newly unlocked 65 quest lines. Accept and follow them all. You'll receive incredibly useful rewards. The High Watch-based Gift for the Goddess is an essential quest line to follow. It will reward you with scrolls to instantly add plus one to any piece of guardian gear or weapon without needing the reagents. Remember that head start on enchanting and upgrading I mentioned earlier? This is it. Following the 65 plus quest lines will grant you a large selection of crystals, enough upgrade scrolls to take your guardian items and weapon all the way to twist shard, and large amounts of gold, all required for end game play. These quest lines will also be required to unlock your apex quest, discussed later in this guide. Island of Dawn. Your quest line, or vanguard missions, will eventually take you to the Island of Dawn. This area used to be the game's tutorial, but is now a high-level BAM hunting area. While here, you're able to accept and complete vanguard requests to hunt various styles of BAMs, or big-ass monsters. Successfully completing the requests will grant you tokens that can be exchanged for new or more powerful glyphs. Glyphs were the small additional benefits you added onto your skills through the skills menu. Once you've killed the BAMs and completed the Vanguard request, right click on the token, just like you have done with the leveling armor tokens you used to earn from dungeons, and buy some nice new glyphs. The Island of Dawn is a very tough area for fresh level 65s, so don't expect to be dominating this area anytime soon. Guardian Missions now you have your Guardian armor and weapon, you're eligible for Guardian missions. These are short tasks in the open world. Press M to open your map, then click Toggle Guardian Missions, the button on the left hand side. Guardian missions are shown as shield icons. You can click on a shield icon to teleport straight there. There are two main types of Guardian missions, flying and fighting. Flying missions require you to use your flying mount. 
you'll take to the sky and complete one of two mini-games. The first involves flying into either red or blue coloured orbs. You can choose either colour, but you must only collect one type. Once you've gathered enough in a row, you'll begin to glow with that colour. Fly into a wraith, one of the ghost-like things, of the opposite colour, and left-click while you're directly next to them to explode and kill them. After doing this enough, a large wraith will appear underneath the sky whale. Collect the energy orbs, and when you are fully charged with one specific colour, shoot at the large wraith. The other type involves collecting energy orbs and shooting down flying argon invaders. Both take a bit of getting used to, but they aren't very dangerous and they're very fun, so give them a try. The fighting guardian missions involve taking on extremely powerful enemies. If you're a fresh level 65 and you want to try one of these, you can, but be warned, you will die. These guardian enemies are a great way to very, very quickly gain item experience, but are also very, very dangerous. The rewards gained from completing any guardian mission will be listed under the shield icon when you bring up the world map. Hover your mouse over the mission and select it to see all possible rewards. Enhancement points. Now you're at the end game, you won't gain much from levels but you will still be able to improve through the use of Enhancement Points, or EP. You'll gain EP from the majority of activities. You can open the Vanguard Request menu to see which activities you can do that will grant you EP. To spend EP, click the Helm icon at the top of the screen and select EP from the drop-down menu. This is the Enhancement Point window. Enhancements are small, but permanent buffs you can add to many of your skills. Where you want to add them is totally up to you. Enhancing a skill will require a certain amount of enhancement points, and sometimes you actually require a certain maximum amount of points earned before you can enhance a skill any further. Check your class Discord to see what the most effective way to spend your points is. Enhancement points will be gained slowly as you play, so by adding them to skills you use often, you'll be able to feel a slow but steady increase of your character's power. The Giller Glade. Once 65, you'll be allowed to visit the Giller Glade once a day. To get here, you'll need to speak to a Vanguard Initiative Quartermaster. You can find these NPCs in any major town or city and buy a premium area teleport scroll. Use the scroll to teleport to the goddess Velik. Once there, you'll see a teleporter behind you. You can use this teleporter to go back to the city of Velika or to travel to the Gila Glade once a day. Terra Club members or VIPs can actually teleport here an unlimited amount of times and can do the Gila Glade twice a day instead of once. The Gila Glade itself is a small outdoors dungeon-like activity. There's a boss at the end, and several events along the way. If you stop to complete the events, defeating an enemy or defending an area, the final boss will be slightly easier, or you can rush past the events and go straight to the end and fight the harder version of the boss, saving some time, but making the final fight much more difficult. This can be a nice way to farm a small amount of daily gold or useful items. Remember. The only way to get here is a premium area teleport scroll from the Vanguard Initiative Quartermasters. Apex Skills Once you've got your Guardian armor, have followed the quest lines and done some dungeons, you should have been able to level up your weapons, armor and accessories, and then upgrade them to higher tiers. As you do so, you'll increase your item level. Once you reach item level 439, and you're far enough through the post-65 quest lines, you'll be able to unlock your class Apex. Each class will act differently, but the basic process will be the same. To explain it simply, once you're the right item level and far enough through the post-65 quests, you'll unlock your Apex quest line. Follow and complete this quest line to allow your class to access its Apex skills. Apex skills are much more powerful 
with longer cooldowns. When you reach your class apex, you may find other skills have been changed or improved. Many classes play completely differently once reaching apex. You may have to relearn a gameplay style or suddenly discover you're able to fill a role you were previously very weak at. Each class apex needs its own video, so I will try and do that in the future. For now, all you need to know is, it's the best your class can be, and you'll unlock it after enchanting and upgrading your weapons and armor, and a lot of questing. After level 65. 65 isn't the level cap, currently that's 70, but very little about your gameplay will actually change now. Level 70 is more for show and prestige, and less actually required. Post-65 questlines are harder, and I'm sure dungeons will be released for the plus 70 levels eventually, but as it stands, 60 to 65 is the start of the grind, and 65 is the true level where you gain your free flying mount, weapon, armor, and accessories you'll have for the rest of the game, guardian missions open up, the Gillaglade can be ran daily, dungeons get harder, Apex skills can be worked toward, the Island of Dawn glyph hunting can begin, and you can start spending your enhancement points. That's a lot of new stuff. But break it down, and take it step by step. You don't have to be perfect at everything straight away. Personally, I'm focusing on completing the quests to get my free armor and weapon enchantments, then running dungeons where I can find the reagents I need to push toward Heroic Oath. Focus on the aspects you enjoy. A few additional important notes for fresh-faced level 65 players. Your expensive crystals slotted into your weapon, armor, and accessories can break, so please invest in a scroll of crystal bind. They're very cheap on the auction house and will prevent you having to buy them all again if you die. I understand 65 is intimidating because everyone seems to be better than you, but Terra players are generally quite friendly and happy to help, so ask if you need advice. I understand this guide has not covered crafting, because that's complex enough to require its own guide, so that's what I'm going to do. Just know that right now, crafting, while not essential, can make certain things cheaper. Also, as a personal note, if you're confused about a level 65 Highwatch quest talking about an Echo Arcana curator, where you have to go and find a crown, it's this guy. Just here, in High Watch. He teleports you to the quest location. It took me so long to find this guy. Right, thank you very much for watching. I hope you've managed to find something useful, or now feel slightly more confident and able to take on Terra's endgame. I'd like to say a huge thank you to the Terra community and my Twitch channel and Discord chat for helping me make this guide and providing invaluable advice. The link to my Discord is in the description below, and you're more than welcome to come and say hello. Or if you'd like to join the Twitch, I'm streaming most nights over at twitch.tv forward slash Josh Strife Hayes. It'd be great if you could come and drop by. Thank you very much for your time. Now go and get grinding.